And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. One of the first board games that I, I really got me back into the board gaming scene in, in my interlude from college was Formula Day. It was just this fantastic racing game, and although it had a few problems like a runaway leader, and there's, it can bog down at times, I still found it fun, especially with the large variety of tracks that were available. Well, it went out of the publisher went out of business, and it was hard to find, but now Asmodee has come out with Formula D. Apparently, the, the E at the end here has burned off for some reason, but... This is a fantastic version. It's really up the quality level. And while I still think Formula D is a good game, not necessarily great, lots of luck involved, it's still very fun. And I still bring it out all the time, especially with large groups, to simulate a racing game. And you can play the, the basic version, the advanced, and now this edition as a street racing version. But let's look really quickly at how the game plays. If you've not played Formula D before, the premise is very simple. You need to get your car around the track before everyone else does. You can play one, two, or three laps. When you're racing your car, you're going to be shifting into different gears. Each gear corresponds with a different die. When you roll that die, for example, this is first gear, it shows I just rolled and I got a one, and you can move your car forward one. And then second gear is a six-sided die that has a range of numbers from two to four, and you can see that you can go much faster. And as you're shifting up in these gears, uh, from third gear, which goes up to eight, fourth gear goes up to 12, fifth gear goes up to 20, and then sixth gear, a 30-sided die, goes up to 30, and you know that you're moving amazingly fast. But what keeps the game from getting too bland is the fact that when players are moving, you know, you don't just simply switch in the fastest gear, when you get to a stop, you'll see here, this mentions a 1 here. That means you need to stop in this curve, where all these arrows are, one time. If you don't stop, you'll lose points, and if you lose enough points, you'll lose the game. And there's some, there's lots of different rules added to the game, and we won't go over all of them, but suffice it to say that you can make it as simple or advanced as you want, but basically the basic game is go as fast as you can around the track, making sure you stop in the curves. Some curves you have to stop in two times or three times. Uh, on the straightaways, there's rules about how you go around cars when you're driving. But that's basically it. Move really quickly around the track, and the first person to cross the finish line is the winner. I really like the components of the game, uh, especially this gear shifting piece in which you place the piece for your car, uh, a card for your card, and then you're going to be putting a gear shifting uh, piece in here along with a peg to keep track of how many points you have. And as the game goes by, you will be shifting down into the different gears, and there's rules about how many gears you can shift up and down, and as you take points, you just move this peg along, you take too many points, your car explodes, and you die. When you add in the advanced version of the game, you'll flip the card over, and instead of having just a set number of points, you'll have different kinds of points. There will be tire points, and brake points, and gear points, and body points, and at the beginning of the game, you'll start with a racer, who fits down here right next to this plastic gear shifting, and he'll tell you how many points you have. If you play the street racing rules, where you add in, you know, different, it's more like a video game at that point, you'll add in different drivers who not only have different amounts of points, but they also have uh, special abilities that they can use. And there's even some more different uh, ways to play this street racing game. I find the street racing game okay. I'm pretty happy with the original basic game. And I also like the fact that you can customize how many points you have. But this is really nice. In the old game, whenever the table shook, the different gear things moved around. Here it won't. You have to move it and slide it. And it gives a much more thematic feel to the game. The dice are the same as they were in the original game. Uh, great different dice, easily tell tellable by different colors. The cars are only, they that it, you know, some more color to them. They're not just one color anymore. And they're still not the greatest cars in the world, but they look a whole lot nicer. And they add it these street racing cars, and we use them in regular races because what does it really matter what model you're using? The game comes with a double-sided board, which is enough for, you know, tons of plays. But if you want more, the game is backwards compatible, and there are probably a hundred different tracks that are available for purchase. Some of them are going to be harder to find because of eBay, but there's just a lot of different tracks out there. There's even more tracks promised that are coming out for this game itself, but it's neat that the game is here and there are so many different tracks with so many different varieties available already to play. The game comes with two rule books. You have your rules for beginners and your advanced rules. The rules for beginners are very simple. It has a few things about moving and braking and 
moving around cars, and anybody can really understand the rules of these. I play this with my young children, and they don't really have any problem with the game. The advanced rules, they add in an advanced game, and then there's a whole pile of optional rules that you can add. You, if you want to add weather effects, if you want to add um, the three-lap race, if you want to add pit crews, all that's available on here. And then there's a third set of rules, and this is brand new to this version of the road races, and it tells you exactly how you play. No longer do you have pit stops, but you actually race on a completely new board. I mean, you can use this board in regular Formula Day racing, but the, the, this board is basically in the city. I guess this is the uh, Fast and the Furious as a board game, per se, and people are shooting at you, and you're jumping, and <laughs> there's all kinds of crazy things happening, and I expect to see more of that in the future. For me, the street racing version of the game is a lot of fun. I, I think it, it works, but I'm pretty happy with the basic version. Three laps is still sometimes a long time to race, and I found that the two-lap version is the best. I usually play with the advanced rules with a few of the optional rules thrown in. I'm just so impressed by these components. The basic game comes out of the box here, and you can play with ten people. And just ten people playing this game, it, it can bog down if you have people who are going to count out every die roll. And I'm very cautious about that. But if you keep things moving and you keep the play going, it's a, it's a tremendous amount of fun. Youth will like playing it. Adults have a good time. There's going to be some complaints about strategy. And sometimes you just get that lucky die roll, which puts you in the perfect position. And it's difficult for other people to catch up to you. But still, it's a racing game that feels like you're racing and can be taught in a short period of time. Tremendous components. This is the best version of the game. And I highly recommend you try it out. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.